Well, if you're watching this video, you're obviously interested in solving problems with ArcGIS Pro, and there's a pretty good chance that you might be using ArcMap. And if you're like me, there's a little bit of hesitation in wanting to jump from one major product release to another one, right? So we, we've been using ArcGIS for many years. Uh, that product really came out around 1999, the year 2000. So we've had a lot of years with ArcGIS. Before that was something called ArcInfo and ArcView. Uh, Arc Pro is the brand new release that's being offered by ESRI. And the logo isn't the only thing that's changed. There has been a lot of good reasons for moving into this direction with ArcPro. So I just want to show you a little bit about the experience you might have using ArcPro, uh, as well as some of the benefits, right? So that's why I say this is the reason you should consider the jump to ArcGIS Pro. The first reason, of course, I don't even have it here, is ArcMap is going away. It's not going to be serviced any longer, so you're not going to get support for it. So ESRI is moving everything into the Arc Pro environment, which is a bit more integrative as a tool. So some of the big things you'll see is just better processing in ArcGIS Pro. You can now, it is a full 64-bit application, so things are going to run faster. You, it can use more memory that's on your computer, where ArcMap is limited to four gigabytes of RAM. Also, Arc Pro is making use of parallel processing. It's also making use of graphical processing units, so GPUs, so raster processing is really fast. And it has a much more or much better integration with your video card and the GPUs there for faster rendering speeds. There's also better editing inside of Arc Pro. You'll also see, a, I don't know if I call it better, maybe the, the word should be a more modern user interface, and we'll see that. Um, there's better integration with cloud-based services. So ESRI is moving into a very modern direction, and in doing so, more things are being serviced in the cloud. We're going to actually do some of that in our work, uh, in this workshop. And also there are some ready-to-use tools that are already bundled and prepared. Well, let's have a look at things. Here is Arc Pro. Here's the interface. And again, for many of you, you may be familiar with Arc Maps interface. If I zoom in to a particular area, you can see how it draws. And in Arc Pro, we don't have really that zoom button any longer. We can just use our, our mouse. I'll use my right mouse and zoom in in this fashion and have things draw. Watch what happens though when I move into a zoom to layer. Automatically it pops up. Turn it off, turn it back on. In ArcMap, let's zoom to our layer. Taking a little bit of time. And it's also, to turn it off, turn it back on. Taking a little bit of time again, so things aren't cached as well. Let's put the counties on, on top of it. So here are our counties, they drop pretty quickly. Let's turn the counties off. And again, we're going through that same drawing process. Come into Arc Pro, and I can turn the counties on, I can turn the counties off. On and off. So you can see there's much faster rendering. Also, I'm gonna come into this other uh, geodatabase I created called uh, Vaccine. Let's throw county in here. There we go. I will turn these off so we're not drawing as quickly. And I'll come down here toward the western portion of Maryland. And of course, now I have to switch to the, the pan tool. That's something we don't really have to do inside of Arc Pro. But if I want to edit something like this, one of the things I have to do is right click and say edit features, start editing. And I will do the uh, counties. I can come in here and then I can make use of my editing tools. Let's uh, go to edit features, oh, editor here, and I can stop editing. In Arc Pro, let's bring in that same feature. We'll bring in our counties.
And I'll show you a little more about the interface later, but here I can go to the edit ribbon. And I can click on the modify button and all of a sudden we have this really nice tool that pops up that's going to allow me to do different things like selecting a feature and then editing the individual vertices. Or I can come in and quit out of that and just hit create. So create features. And when I click on counties, it gives me all the different tools that I can perform. So notice I'm not doing the start and stopping of editing any longer. It is ready to go edit. So right off the bat, we see some better processing uh, and better editing that's being performed. Let's take a look at the, the user interface. Arc Pro has a very Microsoft feel to it. It's also making use of a ribbon structure. So things that work with the map interface, I have in this map ribbon. Things that work in analysis, I have in my analysis ribbon. And again, there's a lot of different tools that I can use. I can click on here for raster analysis and have access to those types of tools or the geostatistical wizard and have those pop up. So those are ready for me right as I'm working with my, my data. In this case, I don't have any raster data, so it doesn't actually allow me to, to perform any analysis. And again, you already saw the edit tool. So again, I can start to create or I can modify different features. I can save them when I'm done. So I don't have to turn the editing on uh, like we did before. Here we're going to the insert and I can insert a lot of different things. I can insert multiple layouts. I can also insert a new map. So this is going to open up a map and let's bring in just the vaccination centers. Now look what we have. Also on this ribbon, I've got this one map I've created. I've also got another map. So this is a brand new idea. I can have multiple maps working. Rather than exploring this interface a little more, let's just jump back to the old version. And again, let's uh, zoom to the counties. We'll zoom to the layer. So look at the interface. It just looks a lot less inviting when you see this. Here's my editor toolbar, and then I can say the start editing and, and perform editing tasks. I'm not gonna bother with that now. But much smaller icons. Um, there isn't any, you've got a view here, which is a drop dropdown. Um, we have data frames, but no, I can't add a new map. So that looks a lot different. If I look at for geoprocessing, these are all of my tools. I've gotten used to this, honestly. So I, I sort of liked it because I could see my analysis tools for overlays and extraction. So you get a bit used to something like that. But if I look over back in Arc Pro, I can come to my analysis tab and move into my tools. So in my tools, I can start to type things like select by location and that will pop up so I can have a look at that. I also can look at different tools for analysis or suitability. There's also some ready to use tools. So automatically, these are tools that are, are commonly used that are now available to me. There's business analysis tools if I had the license for that as well. And then there's raster functions I can make use of. And you can see I've got this nice little interface that tells me what kind of raster functions are available as it relates to analysis, appearances, classification, and so on. So these tools are now much more readily available. In a similar way, if you like that, that toolbox approach that we saw before, you can also click in here and look at toolbox here. And you can come into your portal. So if you have integrated things with Arc Online, and this will be a very new thing for you, there are some ready to use tools that are available for us, as you can see here. And we can see the same ready to use tools over here as well. Under another tab for data, you can see that we have 
uh, all different ways that we can work with data, looking at attribute tables. So here I can look at the counties. I can also right click and open the attribute table for those counties and then also for the vaccination centers. So multiple tables that I'm able to work with. And here I can right click on my county, open up the attribute table. I've got this, you can either dock it or undock it. Uh, and then let's look at the counties here. So now I have my two tabs down on the bottom, but again, much smaller icons. And when you come in here, you can see a lot more things that are available. Even here, I can right click and take a look at all my fields. So this is going to give me a lot more flexibility in terms of handling some of my field definitions. So no more going into our catalog to do some of those things. But, but again, if I wanted, I'm going to close up these windows here. But if I wanted to go into our catalog, I can take a look at the catalog pane and a catalog view of the data as well. So now this is, again, all part of the same interface. So I can look at this map, this map, and the catalog, and they're all stored here. Look also, go back to the map, and we can look at our base maps. These are all the base maps that are now available in ArcPro. Lots of them. In ArcMap, get rid of this. We can add a base map. And we have a few available ones here. And then we can come in and say add base map from ArcGIS Online. And you can see those that are available as well. So different menus for that. So again, it's just a much more inviting view. If I want to measure something, just I can measure a distance or I can measure an area. And then it lets me put in how I want to do that. Again, if we come in here, there's the measure tool. I have to find a little uglier looking button, but it still does a similar thing. But now, now that I've clicked on this, now I can measure a line, measure an area, and check out my distances. So look at all the, the hoops that we have to jump through here compared to what I do here when I just click on measure and then I can get to different information. And then we can come in here again. So that's a little bit of a, of a better user interface. If we look at the share tab, this is also really, really cool. So now I can take my map and I can create a web map out of it or a web layer. So I can publish a web layer if I have an ARC Online account. So that's all available to me. So for example, I can come into web map and this will let me share it either with everyone or just with Salisbury University or if I have different groups that are in here and where it's going to be located. So that'll get popped up into ARC GIS Online. So it's now available for anybody out there who wants to uh, make use of it on the internet. You can also type in another thing called overlay layers. This is using GeoAnalytics Toolbox. So if I come in here, we can get some information about this. And this is using parallel processing to perform the actual overlay. So this is going to be much faster. And here you can see more of that here. GeoAnalytics desktop tools provide par a parallel processing framework for analysis on a desktop machine. So you are going to pay for it because it's a separate license. But if you have eight cores on your computer, you can potentially use all eight cores to perform your analysis. And if you read through the help file, you can see all the different things that, that they have available to them. Another thing I'm going to just show you real quickly as, as we kind of end this is I'm going to type uh, service area. Now, if you've actually used service area, make a service area in ArcGIS, you know you take your road network and you build your own service area. Well, this is a really cool tool, Generate Service Area, and this actually will use data in the cloud that will allow you to look at information based on travel time, time of day, all of that, just similar to what you would do in Google Maps, but you can now make isochronal mapping and perform those sorts of tasks very easily right now because, again, ArcGIS Pro is integrated with the cloud 
and Arc Online. So all those tools that are available in the cloud from ESRI can now be used inside of Arc Pro. So again, more tools that are available to you with cloud-based services. And then again, those ready-to-use tools that are there to run right out of the box. So hopefully that's going to get you a little bit over the fear of, do I need to make this switch from ArcGIS to ArcGIS Pro? And, and there's lots and lots of benefits for doing it. What I'm going to do in the next video is show you a little bit more about the user experience you might have as you bring in a map and get started on a project.